Hi, I'm Fred Hayden from Nashua Outdoor Power Equipment. Two locations, Nashua, New Hampshire and Amherst, New Hampshire on 101A. Today, we're going to talk about uh, maintenance on your lawnmower. Stuff you want to do in the springtime, things that we're going to do here when it comes in. But we figured we'd put some stuff on film, so if you wanted to do some home maintenance or uh, be able to go back and review some things, uh, it'd be at your fingertips. So, first of all, we're going to go over the tools that you're going to need to do this job. This here is a simple drain plan, pan to connect to collect the oil. Um, and once you do collect your oil, you're going to want to bring it someplace that uh, will dispose of your oil. Most of your, your gas stations or your, your dealerships or outdoor power equipment dealerships will take that oil and put it in their recycling facility. Uh, a lot of your, your transfer stations also have that. Uh, this right here, this is a basic ratchet with a socket. And this blade happens to take a uh, 5 8 socket to remove the blade. Spark plug socket to take the spark plug out. This here, this is a nut driver, but uh, you could use either a screwdriver uh, or even a, a socket on a regular ratchet to remove the air cleaner. This right here is your regular uh, putty knife, uh, paint scraper. This is going to clean the mower deck underneath the mower deck. And a grease gun. Uh, nothing special, same automotive grease, uh, automotive grease gun. The small one works just fine also. All right, before we start, we want to make sure we have the necessary replacement parts at hand. Um, things will go a lot faster. We happen to be a John Deere dealership also. This is a Toro mower, but uh, John Deere makes these kits that will have your oil your spark plug, your pre-filter, your air filter. This is a drain tube to drain the oil and a little service maintenance sticker so you can uh, know when you serviced it last. These kits, uh, there's other brands that make them. Uh, Briggs & Stratton makes this engine. Briggs & Stratton produces their own kit, which you can buy also. Or all these parts are available separately. Uh, you can uh, pick them up from your from Nashua Outdoor Power Equipment. You can also order online at nashuapower.com. Or you can, uh, you can buy them, find them at most of your um, premium servicing dealers. So... This should all you, be all you need to take care of your mower for the spring. Make sure you read all your safety, all your owner's manuals and your safety manuals before you attempt to do this yourself. But uh, we want to start the machine up, all right, and get it warm just to so the oil will drain freer and easily, you know, faster. Although if it's uh, cold, it's going to take a long time to come out and you might not get it all out of the engine. So we're going to assume that we've had it running, we've let it warm up for a few minutes, and now we're ready to go. So we want to take the bag off the mower first. That'll make it easier to get around. It won't be in your way. Then we're going to remove the spark plug cover and make sure that's tucked out of the way. That's very important safety whenever you're touching the blades or going underneath the machine. We want to make sure that uh, the, it, it can't start. So take the spark plug wire off. That prevents it from firing up. All right, now. We're going to drain the oil. To do this, we're going to turn the machine around so that you can see. Whenever we drop the oil, we want to drain it so the oil is on the low, the oil fill tube is on the low side and the carburetor is up in the air. If you did it the other way, you wouldn't get the oil out and you'd soak the air filter with oil. And so a lot of times people will sharpen their blades in their yard or go underneath their machines. They tip the machine the wrong way. The oil will drain out of the crankcase and soak their air filter. And now you need an air filter and you also might have oil in the carburetor. So we want to make sure that the oil fill tube is toward the, or away, you want to tip it up so the air filter is up in the air. Okay, so we're not going to actually drain the oil out of this one, but you would remove this oil filler cap right here and then we'll roll the machine on its side okay 
and drain the oil. All right. Once the oil is drained out, we can roll it back up. Okay. Turn it around so you can see the air filter and the spark plug. Now we can remove the spark plug. Oh, we want to check the gap. And usually they're pretty good, but we want to check to make sure we have well, you got to look at your engine specifications. They're typically around 30, 35 thousandths. You can open the gap up with a with a feeler gauge or a spark plug gauge. Install the spark plug. You don't want to over torque these. Again, they should be snug. But uh, you're just compressing the the washer, and uh, you don't want to over torque them and strip the head. Okay, this is a 10W30, uh, Briggs & Stratton recommends a straight 30 weight, 1030 is fine, um, but it holds about 20 ounces. If you buy the Briggs & Stratton oil, it'll come in a, a small container like that, which is just the amount that, that it holds in the lawnmower, or you just have to uh, use the other oil proportionately. There's a gauge on the side. This here is a larger quantity. That uh, That's an exact fill amount for a tractor. but. They will sell them in quantities. It's a little bit cheaper to buy them in the quart size and measure your own, but you can get measured quantities. All right, so we're going to top the oil off. And again, we didn't drain all the oil out of this machine, but we'd use the, the oil and put it in through the filler hole. And if you can see, there's actually two dots. And we want to, they want, it wants to be in between these two dots on the stick, but the top dot is actually where it should be. In order to make sure that's the proper level, we're going to put this in and seat it, okay? And then pull it out and check it. You don't just want to set it in there, you want to make sure it's seated. All right, so we'll, once the oil's topped off and seated, the spark plug's in, now we're going to move over to the air filter. All right, this is a 5 16 socket or a screwdriver you could use to service the air filter or moving the bolt. This lid's going to drop down and it's hinged. It can come right out of there. But uh, there's your air filter. Now this model doesn't have a pre-filter, it just has the paper filter, so this here is the new filter. A lot of your models are going to have a pre-filter. This is a foam filter. This would go in first and then the filter goes on top of it. So a lot of your filters will have this foam filter in it. If you do find this foam filter, replace this foam filter. Uh, during the season, you can check this. You can wash this with soap and water and dry it out. It'll protect that paper filter a lot, uh, a lot better and make that paper filter last a lot, last a lot longer. So we're going to put in the new filter. All right, you can see how the foam is up. Put it back in the hinge. Push it up against the cover and tighten the screw. All right. When you're purchasing your parts, you know if you don't have a specific brand, uh, you'll be able to buy your parts by your engine brand or your model number. They're always going to need your model number, and it's going to be tucked somewhere on the engine. You can see this one here happens to be imprinted. I don't know if you can see that. Can you can you get in on that? Um, it's going to be imprinted in the paint, so it's a little tough, especially if you got time on it to see. But you can wipe it off and typically take those numbers down and your servicing dealer like Nashua Outdoor Power Equipment will be able to provide you with all the parts you need off of those numbers.